Hi guys, um, it's going to be a little bit different now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide people with the missing segment on what happened with uh, Fred on the uh, Sidawa live stream where they said, okay, what is the situation with Muhammad? Is he really the last prophet? So they did their intros and before they were finished, um, then suddenly Mansour came and said, no, 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 hang on, uh, well, let's call in Fred. And we see that we have Fred with us. I think I'll go to Fred first, to give him the opportunity. The reason why, because from a non-theistic perspective, I would like to hear Fred or Stop Spamming's perspective about uh, this man, what we call Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The funny thing is, the question was, is Muhammad or was Muhammad the final prophet? It is not what is Muhammad, who is Muhammad, what is the character of Muhammad. It is not about Muhammad. It is about who the last prophet was or was he the last prophet. This is the topic here, so I don't know why he's suddenly changing it. So, Fred, welcome to our show, and would you like to share your thoughts on this man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from your perspective? Hi guys, thank you, thanks for having me. I hope you're all doing well and you're handling COVID as well as everybody else and you're not affected by it personally. Um, I don't want to talk so much about the person, I just want to ask two questions which are logical questions. Um, because we, we can't, there's, there's no, we need to presuppose because there's no evidence for the existence of this particular God or Muhammad or that there's a relationship between them. So we need to presuppose it. Now, if I look at the claim that this is the last prophet, and if I look at the claim in the Quran that every nation gets a prophet and no nation shall be judged before a prophet has not warned it, we have new nations all the time. Like when Czechoslovakia broke up into Czech Republic and Slovakia. Two new nations. Did they get their messenger? Did they get a prophet? No, they didn't. So why would Muhammad be the last prophet if the Quran says every nation gets their prophet? So this now, okay, I, I was going for the nation here. I, I didn't even have to. I could just say, look, every single person, and this is what it says here in 1715, everybody agrees we are not to punish until we have sent a messenger. And Pictal, we never punish until we sent a messenger, Sahih International, never would we punish until we sent a messenger, Yusuf Ali, not visit with our wrath until we had sent a messenger, a messenger, whatever, to give warning. Now, the funny thing is that my question is a logical one. So I'm not going for the person, I'm not going for the institution, I'm going for the claim in the Quran that says, look, everybody is entitled to get their messenger. And I'm asking, how is that possible if Muhammad was the last one. So this is a contradiction in the Quran, this is a contradiction in Islam, and the whole narrative within Islam, where the, the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad, is the last messenger, the final messenger, the seal of the messengers, that's nonsense. It doesn't make sense internally, it doesn't make sense from an Islam point of view. And that is what I'm trying to point out. I'm trying to point out the logical flaw in this that in, in my eyes totally destroys Islam because the whole concept is that Muhammad is the final messenger and he is like a, like a second, um, I don't know, the, the, or the first assistant of Allah, the second in charge in, in the total um, hierarchy there. So this does not make sense as soon as you read the Quran or you can say, <clears throat> all right, the Quran is wrong. That's also possible. So you can't have both. So, you know, there's a, there's a contradiction here and you need to choose which one. The second question I have is, why is it that not every human being is a messenger or a prophet? Because whether, okay, whether you're a Nabi or, or a Rasul, it doesn't really matter. You have the full message, which I as a normal person don't have. That's why I need a messenger and, and a prophet. Why does, does the creator, the best creator, the, the most perfect creator, not create everybody a messenger or a prophet so that everybody gets the full message and doesn't need any other messengers. And those are just... Okay, I don't know if I need to explain this. The funny thing is that there are some Muslims who still manage to misunderstand this. I, I don't know how this is possible, but as, as you saw in the insert just now, um, this, this was by Ibn Tamiya who said, look, everybody is entitled to get their messenger. Now, why? Because without the messenger, we don't really get the full message. And this is the problem in Islam. This is the problem that you have a creator who claims to be the best of creators, who claims to be perfect, who claims to be all-powerful, all-knowing and everything, who then creates humans who are subpar 
substandard. They do not understand the full message and require other human beings to convey the message. So we have two types, two grades, two levels, or whatever you want to call it, of human beings. One level is able to convey the message and understand the message and remember the complete and total message. And the other half of the other um, whatever you would level is not able to do so. So why would a God who knows that he is creating humans who don't understand the message and then has to go and, and fix the mistake by sending messengers after them to go and uh, tell them, no, no, hang on, you got it wrong, let me quickly tell you how it works. Why? This is my question, why is that necessary? This is the second question that in my eyes totally destroys Islam because it, the claim is that you have a God who is, who is all-powerful, all-knowing and um, you know capable of anything and, and knows everything. So, so sending messengers to tell human messengers, sending human messengers to tell humans what his story is. And that to me is illogical, that is also a contradiction, and this totally eliminates any necessity for Islam. That's the two questions I have, logical questions. Sure. Thank you, Fred. These are indeed excellent questions. Um, and it's not like um, questions that, you know, they don't have any real meaning or, or purpose. I think, you know, they're very, very, very good questions indeed. So your first question was, it, the Quran seems to suggest there will be, I mean, this is your point. I'm going to give uh, the panelists to answer your question, but I just want to highlight what I've understood from your question, that there will be new, uh, there will be prophets or messengers to every nation. Um, but I think there's a clear understanding of this, in, in my understanding, clearly, that, you know, Prophets were sent to the previous nations, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last and final of them, and he's sent to all of the nations. So any new new nation that comes and any nation states breaks apart, I mean he is indeed the nation prophet to all of these nations, millions of nations if they were to come in the future. Yeah. <laughs> and the others not. This is total nonsense. Like, this is complete and utter sheer nonsense. Because, uh, come on, at the end of the day, if Muhammad, he's, he's been dead for over a thousand years he has not been able to be a messenger for the Czech Republic. Okay, because the Czech Republic came about, the nation of Czech people came around, came around a lot later than Muhammad did. So Muhammad was never there. So he cannot be the final messenger. So what are you talking about? It does not make sense what you are saying. Why is it so difficult to understand that this is illogical? And it's factually impossible for somebody who died a thousand years ago, over a thousand years ago, to be a messenger today for any nation that has just, um, you know, sort of generated itself. It's impossible. So that does not make sense. The other, I mean, this is my take. I mean, I'll get uh, the panelists to explain a bit further. Why, to your second question is why is not everyone a messenger of God? Why do you need a particular individual to convey the message uh, rather than everyone receiving the message from God? So I'd like, uh, like to start with Ijaz, uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, he doesn't have an answer, so he passes us on to Ijaz. Let's see what he has to say. Questions, and I'll go to um, Hashim. Mm -hmm. So I, I do like the very first question. Uh, it's a foundational question, an argument from first principles. So I, I actually want to thank Fred. Uh, for asking that question. So the, the question uh, branches out to sub-question. So how, how do we reason with this? Well, in the first place, I think last week we, I had went through this process already, but I'll quickly summarize it. We do know that almost all civilizations had some conception of a god. Almost all civilizations believed that they were created in the first place. So there does seem to be some kind of basic universal message that all nations generally seem to have had. So... No, no. Number one, the waffling. This, this is totally irrelevant, it has nothing to do with my question, and is factually incorrect. There are nations, there are people who don't even have the concept of God and the language. So what are you going to do with those? So, no, a lot of people don't have this. Like I, for example, am one who does not have this. There are millions others who don't have that, so, so this is nonsense. Uh, for example, before people, sorry, before the Europeans came to the New World, the, the people in the New World already believed in God, already had their own Yeah, okay, but this is hundreds of years ago. I'm talking today. This is the whole point. The problem is with today. The problem is that it says that there is a messenger that will come to the nations, and there is none. The last one was 1400 years ago, this is the claim, and we have nothing. There is no evidence for this God, no evidence of Muhammad, no evidence that there ever, ever was any kind of um, you know, interaction between them. So 
how are you going to justify the claim that there was a messenger for the countries, for the nations that have come about in the last thousand years? You don't have one. Religions, and many of them coexisted with the understanding that there would most likely come a savior or a messiah in some capacity to bring them uh, guidance, at least in this life. So from this perspective, it would seem strange to me that if a God did not exist, that most societies uh, in the pre-Columbus era already accepted this God. So there does seem to be a universal thread which uh, links all of these societies. To okay, I can see what he's doing now. He's not addressing my question. <laughs> he's, going, he, he's going for my preamble where I said, look, we, we don't have anything. So we are reliant on the messengers because there is no God and there is no Muhammad. There is none of this. So we are reliant on the messengers today. And I'm not talking about, um, I said, we just have to presuppose it. So he is trying to now address my preposition, presupposition, where I say, okay, I'm, I'm just leaving this, this element, God, Muhammad, existence, and all that alone for now. I'm just addressing the logical side. That's exactly what I said. So there's no need to now go and try and, and persuade me that there's a God. Gather. Now, if you ask the question, what would a society look like or a nation look like if they accepted uh, Islam uh, as we understand it today? Well, they would have to believe that God sends prophets or messengers, which almost all civilizations do believe in. They would have to accept that there were non-corporeal beings that we can interact with, which again, almost all civilizations seem to accept. They no, 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 hardly anybody does. They, I, don't, I don't understand what you're on about. Are you talking about the past now? Today, we, we have millions and billions of people who don't have this, who don't have this belief. Even within Muslims in Islamic countries, we don't have this. So I don't know what you're talking about. We would also have to be uh, the understanding that there is a uh, classes of people in society or learned people that would dispense the sacred knowledge. That seems to also have been universally understood. Uh, the, the significance of the family unit and how it's uh, arranged, that again also seems to be universal. So when someone asked me the question, what will it look like if there are, uh, if uh, all these disparate nations in the pre-Columbus era looked like if they had the same message, then it would reflect exactly what we see today in history. So I don't think that one has to presuppose anything. I think the uh, the, the evidence is quite easily demonstrable. Uh, no, there's no evidence, none whatsoever. What you are doing is you're making claims now. You are saying everybody understands what a God is and therefore God exists. You can't do that. And this is not the point that I'm questioning is the logical sequence. I'm saying today we expect a, a, another prophet, another messenger who tells us what is what, and we don't have it. We don't have anyone because the last one is like the bus, last bus left hours ago. The last messenger left over a thousand years ago. We don't have any more. So in other words, we don't have anybody to explain the message to us because God made us into stupid humans who don't understand the message. So I'm not talking about God and no, there is no evidence. So no, that's bullshit. What we would say, however, is that as Muslims, we do believe that the people did eventually uh, could not corrupt the religion, but they allowed their cultural practices and they brought their ignorance into the various belief systems that they had. And this corruptibility is what we find and see, again, universally throughout almost all civilizations and societies. And this is something that the Quran wants against. So I would say, no, there is a clear common thread that unifies almost all peoples upon the earth. And then this uh, definitely indicates that there is some specific goal that we need to worship. Uh, maybe Brother Hashim Omansu wants to add on to. Okay, well, you've, you've done absolutely nothing. You've just waffled. You, you did not address anything. You didn't answer. You've, you just brought irrelevant stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, sorry, gen gentlemen, is it possible to come in before sure. Hashim? Ahead, because I feel like mm -hmm. anything, anything that I say that I don't pick up on, Hashim is, is obviously more qualified. That, to that's fine, Mike. That's fine. Go ahead. More than welcome, Mike. Go ahead. Are you good for me to go now, yeah? Um, obviously, answering the questions, I mean, me personally, from a perspective of where I've come from, I would turn around and say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is 100% correct in his revelations that he will be the last prophet, simply on the basis that you have now had the complete message. Everything that is, is needed now to spiritually align, to become one with God and, and, and hear, you know pray and give all greater gratitude that way, has been given. There's n what else can you add? It's a complete... He doesn't understand anything of what is going on here. We are being told that nobody will be punished unless there was a messenger. I am questioning this. I'm saying there is no messenger. The last one was here 1400 years ago. Where is the messenger this year? I'm not talking about Muhammad. Can't you understand that? 
Is that too much to comprehend or what? I'm asking about the logical sequence here. I'm asking about the veracity of the Quran, making a claim that you need a messenger before somebody can be judged and punished. And all you are saying is, well, Muhammad was a great guy. Well, that, who cares? Revelation. There's, there's no more for it to be added. There's no reason mm -hmm. to have further prophets. The message is there for you to read, to break down, assimilate, and take on. It's up to you now, as an individual, to take it. Yeah. Or you don't even know the message. You don't even understand what the Quran is. You don't have the message. So you can't come and tell me what the message is. You're not a messenger. You're not a prophet. Who the hell do you think you are that you can say, well, we don't need any more messengers? Well, I do, because I don't understand Islam. I don't understand any logical, coherent, whatever. There, there is nothing there. It's... it's it's everything is illogical there is nothing that is correct so I desperately am in need of a messenger to explain this to me and there isn't there is none the last one came 1400 years ago and you're saying well he was a great guy so what or leave it it's your choice and that's the important part here. it's not choice. and no it's not my choice I was created in the knowledge what was going to happen to me you need to read your text voice so you have to choose okay with regards to why not anyone or everyone can become prophet or, or messenger. I mean, you have to look at it from a logical point of view. That was not the question. The question was, why are there no messengers today and why isn't everybody created a messenger so that we don't have two different levels of human beings, that everybody is equipped with the same level of knowledge automatically right from the beginning? Is that you have to have the discipline and the, the, the character build to be able to take such a responsibility. First of all, the Prophet Muhammad didn't just happen to just get this information. He had to be disciplined in some way. He, you know, in the way it's being read, how you interpret it, it's up to you, that he went to a cave and received his first revelation in quiet and darkness. So he was, he was clearly meditating. And that's a practice that takes a lot of discipline to achieve anything significant. Okay, you, just because you believe the fairy tale doesn't make it true. Just because you tell me that Muhammad was a great guy doesn't mean that we need two different classes of people. We need the normal people who are stupid and we need the people who have the message who are supposed to be educating the people who are stupid and they're not because there are no more messengers or prophets. You're not making any sense. So for anyone to become a prophet messenger, it's, it, that's not how it works. It clearly will not work that way. You have to be disciplined to be able to hear the message or see it however you want to interpret it. Um, and obviously then you have to be the kind of person built with the shoulders of such complexity and responsibility to be able to lead and to go forward trying to get that message across in a way that people a can understand it b and b that will be able to hear it and then take on your advice or not you know that that, that not everyone can be given that i'm sorry but it's like saying why can't everyone have a degree it's just it's just not going to work and that's a much lower form of, of becoming a prophet or a messiah that's that's all i want to add at this point so obviously brother mahashim has a lot more from the Quran and himself and his, his knowledge then obviously I'll, I'll give way to that now. Thank you Mike. Hashim. Yeah, mashallah. Barakallah uh, Thank you Brother Mike. Uh, really interesting aspect from someone who's just accepted Islam very no, uh, recently. it's not answer. interesting at all. So thanks for your input and really appreciate that. Uh, as for Fred, uh, yeah, good question. But I think before you come to the conclusion whether uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the other messengers were sent to all the nations and all, I think it's, it's quite important for you first to focus on whether there is a God and if God exists because <laughs> <laughs> No, Hashim, it doesn't work that way. My goodness. Are you a child? I mean I've seen you debate a couple of times, but this is apparently all that you manage. Come on. Can't you can't you behave like a like a like a grown up, like an adult? It's about the logical question, the logical sequence. That's what it is. It is not about belief, it's not about faith. I am questioning the logical sequence comparing Quran to reality. That's all that is happening here. I don't need a sermon from you. Regardless of what we say, uh, you're just going to say that, oh, it doesn't make sense, that, that doesn't, um, I, I don't believe that, and so on. So, I mean, have a look around, see if everything was created. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, the trees and the clouds and everything. Oh, please. Okay, I'm, I'm beginning to understand why they deleted this. This is embarrassingly bad. I'm questioning the logical sequence. 
why does that not go inside your brain? I don't need a sermon now about the Creator and how wonderful He is. I'm asking about the discrepancy between the Quran and reality. That's my question. By itself, or someone created it. Look at the universe, look at all these suns that you see in front of you. Uh, so anyway, with regards to your particular question, I mean, there is, uh, there were definitely messengers and prophets sent before to all the nations. What does that mean? That means before the advent of Prophet Oops, I had some, some outages here and I, I don't even know why. I, do, I don't know if they stopped something or if they did anything, I have no idea. But they suddenly, yeah, you see this suddenly, yes, they and were it dropped. I don't know what happened here. Messengers and prophets sent to other places and other nations, as is clearly indicated in the Quran. Uh, as for this new countries coming into being, they, were, they came after the advent of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, 1,000 years, 1,400 years after. So I don't think you're looking at the same thing. It's kind of uh, anachronistic when you look at... Uh, okay, this is exactly the problem. This is the problem, that there are nations which came into being a thousand years later and the, the last prophet has, has been and gone. Uh, the breakup of Czechoslovakia, uh, sorry, of uh, Yugoslavia and so on. Uh, so there's a clear uh, passage in the Quran, I would like to, to highlight that, it's in chapter 3. Word. Uh, I, don't, I don't need a Quran recitation, I need a it's logic, seven, nine, logically where consistent. It says, Allah would not leave the believers in a state you are in presently until he separates the evil from the good. Nor would Allah reveal to you the unseen. Yeah, but instead, no, no, Allah no. chooses of his messengers whom he wills. That's quite important. Allah chooses of his messengers whom he wills. That's another inconsistency, right? If, if I do everything according to the message and then this Allah can still go and choose whom he wills and the rest, well, tough luck, taki, tough luck. You go to hell. I, d I don't like you. I, d I created your nose the wrong way, so I'm going to send you to hell. Well, tough shit. Bye. Cheers. So what is the point? You know, you, you guys always talk about the test, you know, the test of life. And then you tell me, well, you know, uh, you, you've been given the task, you've been given the message, you've been given everything, and now you're going to be tested on this. Yeah, but we're not told what the test is, and we're not told what the pass mark is, we're not told what topics are going to be tested, we're not, going to, we're not told who is going to be tested when and where on what, and for how long, and, and so on and so forth. Are we able to change our minds? No, because Allah, Allah already has knowledge of everything. So we were created to either pass or fail the test right from the beginning, so it's not a test. And number two, even if we pass the test, there's still a chance that this brilliant God then says, no, nah, I've changed my mind, not you, bye, cheers, help. So, come on, there's no logical consistency here. There's no logical sequence here. There is nothing here that makes sense in any way. So believe in Allah and His messengers. And if you believe and fear Him, then for you is a great reward. Yeah, you need to fear this God. So Allah clearly specifies that He He's the one who chooses messengers. So it's not yeah. like Prophet Muhammad or Moses or Jesus. They wanted to become messengers and say, yes, I now declare myself as a messenger. These individuals, these chosen ones, these prophets and messengers, they were elected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So until the age of 40, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know that he was a prophet. Yes. Until that an angel Gabriel came to him in the cave of Hira and he declared to him, the message of Allah and that's when you realize that this so what that he has a special role to play why can't you guys understand I am not talking about Muhammad I am talking about the logical consistency why do you keep giving me a sermon about Muhammad I don't care about this I know the story so it is not like these individuals they chose themselves or self-appointed themselves to carry out this heavy task which is not a, not an easy thing to do if you look at every uh, the, uh, the story and the biography of every prophet and messengers they went through a very tough time yes nearly death they had to go through nearly um, uh, such a tough time that they had to face it was a matter of life and death at many many uh, uh, at many junctions during their lifetime 
And there's another ayah in the Quran which also highlights this in Surah Al-Hajj, oh, no. it says, Allah chooses from the angels, messengers, and from the people. Indeed, Allah is what all hearing. With regards to your message going to all the nations, I mean, do you really need prophets and messengers in this day and age of information? Yes. You don't. I mean, we go to the internet, you can read about every prophet and messenger on the internet. You go to the television, you go to look. No, you cannot. This is the whole point. The Quran was written in a language that my creator did not equip me with. So I am being tested on a subject that I don't know, that I have not been told about, that I have not been taught about, which is being given to me in a language I have not e been equipped to understand the message. And then the people who are supposed to provide me with the guidance and with the information that I need to pass the test, well, they died a thousand years ago. That is the logical inconsistency that I am questioning. And you don't seem to understand that you are repeating nonsense. And then you're saying, you see, I'm answering your question. No, you are not. Lots of other mediums through which the message is, is carried forward today. So after the last message, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu passed away, whose duty it is to carry out and propagate the message? It is the message of the believers, the Muslims. So they will be the ones who will carry the message, which we call da'wah. Yes, invitation to the message of Islam. Invitation to believe in Allah and his Rasul and his books and angels and so on. So it is also a part of our duty to propagate this message. And look what a mess you guys are making of it. You have no clue what is going on. You can't answer my very simple, very straightforward questions. And then you are saying you are the ones who are supposed to help me. You can't even help yourselves. You don't understand even, I mean, half the Quran. I can give you sentences in the Quran that you will not understand. You need to go and look them up. You need to go and have other scholars tell you what they actually are. And there are still sentences that nobody understands in the Quran. So you believe a book that you yourself don't understand and now you're telling other people like me this is what you need to follow but you're not able to tell me what I'm supposed to follow and why. You only have to, the only thing that you have is well if you don't you're going to die and you're going to be um, uh, tortured for eternity. You need to be afraid. The threats is all that you have and you don't understand how silly these threats are if you are giving them to an atheist. Somebody who does not believe gods or goddesses exist and therefore by extension no hell and no heaven. So that's ridiculous to go and do this. Give me something logical, something rational. Give me a rational line of reasoning. That is all I want, not this waffling and this sermon. And there are many mediums. So I'll give you a hadith which is quite interesting. It's one oh. of the actual, I would say it's a mirror. Okay, look, uh, hadith are total fairy tales. Forget about hadith. Those, uh, come on, what, what good is it if you give me hadith? I can give you five who tell you the opposite of this. And we, we can't go and, and declare, yeah, these are authentic and these are not. Nobody knows this. In a, in, in a sense, sorry, this prophecy itself, because this was mentioned at a time when Islam was in its infancy, when Islam, when the, when the Muslims were surrounded by their enemies. The no, this was hundreds of years later. You don't know any of this. You don't know who the origin of these hadiths are. You don't know who actually wrote the seerah. You have no idea. How can you be so, you know, so certain and, and, and project this, this um, I, I don't know, this, this idea that you know for sure that all this happened? You don't. Quraysh, yes, the Christians, the Jews, who were all basically the enemies of the Muslims at that time. So they were uh, only a small fraction of what these other religions were at that time. And in his infancy, when the Prophet Sallallahu clearly states uh, this particular hadith, which I will just read to you, this is in Musnad Ahmed, uh, number 16509. Right. Tamim Ad-Dari reported, the, the Prophet Sallallahu said, this matter will certainly reach every place touched by night and day. Allah will not leave a house or, res or residence except that Allah will cause the religion to enter it, by which the honorable will be honored and the disgraceful will be disgraced. Allah Do you see what nonsense this is? Don't you understand that there are houses where the people don't even know what a God is? Don't you understand that this house, for example, has never seen any kind of a God? What you are doing is you're just preaching and it's nonsense. Why are you doing that? I asked a very rational, logical question. And you insult my intelligence with this kind of drivel? What is wrong with you guys? Come on. 
you, you're telling me that you are the messengers who are there to give dawa to people, to explain this. And you're making a total mess of it and being like, you, you look like fools here. I will honor the honorable with Islam and he will disgrace the disgraceful with unbelief. Yes. Now there is a deeper meaning to this. What does it mean to honor and to disgrace? That means if you follow the message, the true message of Islam, yes, you will be honored in the hereafter. And those who will actually reject it, they will be in a state which will be of uh, of, of eternal damnation. And this because uh, in the Quran, Allah says the only religion acceptable is Islam. And what is Islam? Submission to one God and submission to his, uh, his will and obedience to his uh, uh, worship, sorry, uh, uh, his will and worship only. And this is clear. So we see that this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which says Islam will enter in every house. What does that mean? That means the message of Islam will be delivered to every single corner where there is day and where, they, where there is day over this night and in every house. Okay, this is total nonsense. It will enter. Now look around. <sighs> For what? What What are you doing? What is the point the of the this? The mass media that we have today of both television, uh, of, of radio prior to that, then the television, and now with the internet, yes? All this technology has allowed Islam and the message of Islam to be delivered to every house. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this 1400 years ago when Islam was still in its infancy. A beautiful prophecy of the Prophet, last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. My question is, where are the prophets? Before I give Brad um, chance to speak, I just want to add some <coughs> thoughts on this very quickly. So, um, this is what the Quran actually says. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ This is in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 36. Um, so Allah says He has raised, this is a past tense, in every nation, Ummah, a messenger, inviting them to worship Allah and avoid the false gods. So it is not what you have understood that you know God will be sending in the future and all the time a new prophet. Okay, what you're doing now is you're just going, focusing on one word. I'm looking at the general concept that everybody is getting the message by a messenger. Everybody, this is what Hashim just said, every house is supposed to be entered by the message. That's not the case. So I'm asking where the messengers are. If the last one was here 1400 years ago, where's the next one? Not coming because it's the final one. I'm sorry, that's a failure. This is talking about, as the revelation came to the Prophet Allah is explaining that in the past, he has raised his appointed messengers to all nations because he doesn't punish a nation or, uh, or a group of people unless he tells them what is required of them because this is the basic requirement. Okay, so you're contradicting yourself. You just said it's the nations and now it says what everybody is. I don't know. Come on, guys. Can't, can't you focus a bit? Of justice. You don't punish someone without telling them what they're supposed to do. <laughs> so Allah doesn't punish them and he actually sends the guides and the warners. Um, and, and if they disbelieve and reject them, of course, uh, they become deserving of, of, of the punishment of God. Um, so your question, contradictions that you yeah. assume it's there is actually non-existence. It doesn't. I'm not assuming contradictions. I am showing, demonstrating contradictions and you are doing nothing to alleviate them mean that God will continuously send the Prophet and Messenger. Indeed, the Quran clearly says that God has made Prophet Muhammad Islam the final messenger from his time until the end, as Mike already highlighted, because Allah, God has perfected and completed his religion. So once it is complete, you don't need another Prophet and a Messenger. So even It's neither perfect nor anything. And this is, <laughs> come on, can't you see the contradiction here? If it is so perfect, you don't need messengers. If it is so perfect, anybody can understand it. If it is so perfect, even I, the stupid human, I can understand it. I don't. So I need a messenger to tell me what the message is because it is not perfect. And every time I open the book, it doesn't matter where I open it, I don't understand what it says. So I need somebody to explain it to me because whatever I do, whatever I look, whatever I read in the Quran, I'm just shaking my head thinking, what am I supposed to do with this? It's nonsense. Even if nation states break apart and new nations form, the message mm -hmm. of Islam that God wants to give to people so that they can abide by this guidance is all completed. You don't need a new prophet or a messenger to tell them what to do. In fact, the Islam is such that, uh, I'm sure Fred, you know, there are analogical deductions that can be made, which is a source of Islamic law, if, even if there's no clear cut indications in the Quran or the statements of the prophet, because you can make this analogical deductions of Qiyas, and this is how, in matters of whether it's a cloning or euthanasia, you name it, Islam can give you a ruling based on the two original foundations uh, of that. And just want to highlight a point. I mean, I, I, I'd rather um, like you to join in another show uh, with us again on the very question of existence of God. Because when you say there is no 
proof or evidence for the creator. I mean, this is your opinion. There are hundreds and thousands of people who are convinced that they have you know, received the evidence and, and they have received the proof uh, and they're convinced uh, and convincing to them. Perhaps the evidence that you see is not something that is convincing to you. And that's probably we have to discuss in another show. So your, your question about the last point. Uh -huh, so if I join there, then you're also going to cut me out afterwards. Um, why there's no need for, why doesn't everyone get the same message? I mean, not everyone is meant to be the guide. Not everyone is meant to lead the nation. I mean, this is a role and, and a duty to particular individuals. When God chooses a prophet or a messenger, he chooses with his wisdom in whom he thinks and after uh, the training them to place this message so he can actually lead the people and guide the people. You don't need everyone to become a guide. You don't need everyone to be the recipient of revelation. Um, this is not how God has been dealing with in his wisdom. Okay, so Fred, you've had several perspectives from us. Um, share your thoughts of what you've heard. Okay, I don't want to, but you know that I don't want to make this into a long discussion again. So I'm just going to take your opinions um, and I'm going to take them and, and say thank you very much for your opinion. Um, my opinion is that all you've done is opened up a lot of um, contradictions. Um, indeed, I, I like your suggestion um, to look at the basics, all right, to, to look where, where do we start. So um, is there really evidence? What kind of evidence? What are we talking about if we say this is evidence? And I think that's a very, very good start um, because here we're jumping right into, you know, presuppositions and, and things like that. So I'm just going to leave it here. Thank you very much for your opinion. Um, Thank you thanks for very much for, us. for uh, taking us and I'll, I'll leave you with, with the other guests. I'm sure you can have a lot of things to discuss and then I will keep an eye on out for the for the next topic. Thank sure. you, guys. Uh, no. Yeah, you more, um, welcome. Okay, the cutting off. Join us and, and join us again. Getting quite um, bad, so I left it. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to see if I can do this again. If I can, because the downloading is actually quite complicated. Because what they've done is they've kept the ID, the YouTube ID. So as soon as I go and download the YouTube ID, it downloads only the two-hour version. So it's very difficult to get hold of the three-hour version. I still need to trick, uh, you know, a little bit, find some way of, of getting this to work. I don't know how the system works. I don't know what YouTube has done there. So thanks for the time being. Um, if I do manage to get the full hour, I'll just um, upload it next to this one. So thanks. Cheers. If anybody has any suggestions, if any corrections or whatever, let me know. See you next time in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.